Okay, so Kate Martin performing a posture analysis on a client and showing you the things to look for from the anterior view at the moment, so the front view, and I'll go through the relevant stretches. So from the front view, they have the client make sure they're looking straight ahead and that their feet are on the same line facing forwards. What you're looking at from anterior view is the turn up to the head, are the shoulders in a straight line, and you can't tell from where I'm sitting, you have to be visibly in front of the person to be able to have a look, and then you make a mark. I make a mark, for example, like that on the paper as to whether the shoulders are higher or lower. Looking down here at the, at the at the hips, we'll call it the ASI, so you can find these landmarks if you can, if the person's um, lean enough for you to find them. Some people you'll get it too big and then you just purely have to use the fat folds on the side there. So you can come down this way, are the hips level? Whoops. Make a mark on the front of the paper on the front body, in the anterior view, which hips higher. Doesn't mean anything yet. We're gonna decide what it means in a second. Have a look at the knees, add a bit of a palpate or a feel. Have a look at the ankles, how much space is underneath each arch of each foot in the center. So this one's higher, so this arch is higher, so this Medial malleolus in here in the center, have a look at that, even get down on the floor so you can see it properly. Have you broken your feet or anything before, Tina? No. Okay. But really the client should be putting the marks on this form of where they're sore before they do the posture assessment, but Tina's so young, she doesn't have any sore bits. So one foot, the arch is higher than the other. What does that mean? Well, it's all in correlation, usually with the hips or sometimes with leg length. And I'll get you to face me, so facing the side. Thanks. So from the side view, you're making sure the lateral malleolus, so the hip, the hip bone, the ankle bone, is in line with the middle of the knee. As you can see, Tina's is a little bit further forward of where that bone is and that you want, just cross your arms at the front please, you want that hip bone to be in the middle as well. You want the line of the hip bone to be in the middle. So there's the lateral malleolus. This is a little bit further forward and this is in line with the knee. So, so far we have more front carriage. So I would write a mark on here to say that the knee is an inch forward and that the hip is an inch forward as well of where that is. Now ideally, if you're not used to looking at this visually from the side, you have a plumb line down the center of the client and you line them up with that lateral malleolus with the plumb line so you can see how much further forward they are. Now also in the center line with that lateral malleolus should be the middle of the elbow. So I already know she's carrying her arm too far forward so that ideally should be there. This is all based on ideals doesn't really matter unless someone presents with pain, there's nothing to fix. The middle of the shoulder, the AC process over here, should also be in line with that or within an inch, and it is within an inch. The other thing you want to look at is where the hole in the ear is. Now the hole in the ear, very importantly, should be within one inch of the AC joint, and it is, but the hole in the ear is probably here in line with her foot. That's not very technically measured. It's still a little bit forward, forward facing. But to correct that, sometimes I will say to someone, for example, Tina, just put your body weight in your heels. And there you go, that's her new position. That's where I'd want her to stand and stay, as well as pulling her belly in and tucking her bum under a little bit. Try that for me. Yeah. And to enhance that, you'll get them to remember that position at the top of the squat, for example, and it takes several months to reprogram the nervous system for them to remember that position. Okay, let's do posterior view. So turn around for me, sweet face of the wall. And again, making sure she's lined up 
on the plumb line, making sure her toes are level, make sure your toes are level on the carpet bag, they don't have to both face straight, just same, that's it. So, and then you can look from the bottom as well, get down again, have a look at these um, medial malleolus, the ankle bones, which one's higher or lower. The crease, the popliteal crease in the knee, is it level? No, that one's slightly lower. The glute fold, it literally is the crease. Sometimes you won't have one, but you will usually have a look. Yep, that one's lower, so it's all lower on that side. Have a look at the top of the hips. Got a push in there because it's a bit of meat and which hips higher. And you don't look for stuff if it's not there, so this one's slightly higher. So this is where your anatomy comes in. Maybe QL that goes from ribs to hips on that side is tighter, probably. It would be demonstrated when she did the buckle moving squat, you'd probably be able to see her move hip chombo like that. And then you have a look at, if you can tell, the straightness of the spine. Sometimes you can see an S bend or a C bend. Have a look at head carriage. How, if you can see it, have how much of the head can you see from each side? Is it equal or is she turned like that even though she thinks she's seen straight ahead, which just shows you tight neck muscles in a certain position. Then you need, to, then you know what you need to stretch. So you might need to stretch this side. You might need to stretch that leg if it's a little bit closer to the ground. Typically what happens is when the hip is in this position, if this leg is closer to the ground and that's confirmed by a dropped arch on that side, everything on that side is going to get sore potentially first. So TFL and the um, quads are going to be sore. The calf will get sore. Sometimes that knee is sore. Loosening that with the foam roller is amazing, but you do need to address this as well. So it's a good idea to stretch their lower back before they start stuff. And also the hip flexor that's anteriorly rotating her pelvis this way possibly, it's all a detective game, it needs to be stretched as well. So we're doing a posture assessment, Tina, so we can figure out what to stretch before she starts exercising so that it, um, it relaxes and therefore gives the other muscles a proper chance to work. So we're not stretching global muscles that hold you up, or sorry, we're not stretching global muscles that move the limbs, we're trying to stretch the postural muscles that hold you up against gravity. Um, thanks.